transmitiendo nuestra comunidad al mundo. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to Facebook Live with Mariposa Community Health Center. I'm Eladio Pereira, the Chief Medical Officer with me. My colleague, Associate Medical Director, Dr. Phil Williams. Welcome, Dr. Williams. Thank you so much, Dr. Pereira. And uh, welcome to our followers on Facebook Live. And again, my sincere thanks to Edgardo Marco and Mariposa for supporting this activity uh, to reach out to our, our community. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Eladio Pereira, Con mi, conmigo se encuentra mi colega, el Dr. Phil Williams. Um, le agradecemos a Edgardo, Marco y Mariposa por apoyar esta, esta actividad. So we want to touch on about three areas today if we may. One is uh, testing um, and some of the issues we're facing in testing. Then I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Williams to expand a little bit about the difference between PCR and antigen when we want we use PCR, when we use antigen, although at the moment we need to use whatever is available. And then I'll finish with uh, a couple of words about uh, the medications that are now available, uh, Paxlovid and <coughs> Molnupiravir. Um, so esta tarde vamos a cubrir tres áreas. Voy a comentar acerca de las pruebas que están disponibles <coughs> o no están disponibles Le voy a pasar el micrófono al doctor Williams para que hable la diferencia entre la prueba de, de PCR y el antígeno. Y voy a terminar con unos comentarios acerca de los dos medicamentos que, que están uh, disponibles. So we know that uh, testing are uh, in high demand. Um, there is a scarcity of test at Mariposa. We were low on tests last week. Um, we're very fortunate that we're back back on track in terms of uh, the PCR tests that we use with uh, LabCorp. Um, that's the company that does the the testing for us. So we're now testing. We got about uh, 3,500 kits, and so we're now uh, use, using those. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's important to always uh, keep in mind that, in our opinion, clearly testing plays a role in terms of making a diagnosis, reduce spread and isolation. Having said that, we know that this illness is so widespread. It's hard to find someone who has not been exposed in many, many areas. So. We certainly want to test those individuals who have symptoms for sure. Uh, however, if you have symptoms and you've been exposed to a COVID case, you should assume you have COVID-19, uh, isolate yourself for five days, and then of course wear a mask for at least five more days after that. So symptomatic people should be tested. CDC that recommends testing also for those individuals who um, have been exposed to a COVID case at day five, no sooner than day five. However, if you don't have access to a test, um, just monitor your symptoms, mostly upper airway disease, um, runny nose, headache, sore throat, sometimes low grade fever, malaise, sometimes chills. Cough is not as prevalent with Omicron than, than, with, with, than with Delta. Um, so we, we, we know we want to be tested, but having said that, it's everywhere. 
what are you seeing, Doctor? I agree. You know, and it, you know, even more important than testing is 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 really pre preventing you from getting the illness. Right. So what is that? That's of course doing all the things we've been talking about talking about before, such as wearing a mask, distancing, not going to large family gather gatherings, but then also the vaccine and the booster. We've learned, especially with Omicron, the importance of the booster. Um, you know, I think initially the uh, rates of uh, boosters here in our county was a little low, but that's actually, I think, increased a lot over the last last couple of months. We've had a couple of great vaccination uh, weeks at the at the rec. So really, prevention, prevention. So las pruebas son importantes. Queremos hacerle la prueba a aquellos pacientes que tienen síntomas. Uh, eh, Dolor de garganta, dolor de cabeza, dolor muscular, eh, quizás fiebre, un poco de tos. Uh, y aquellos pacientes que han sido expuestos a un, a un caso de COVID. Pero lo que hizo el doctor Williams es que más, es más importante es la prevención. Y recomendamos en estos momentos eh, que las personas se queden en, en su casa a menos que sea absolutamente necesario salir. Eso incluye ir con el doctor, hacer compras de comidas uh, o ir al trabajo. Um, es la única manera de evitar ex exponer uh, a, este, a este virus. Um, mantener la distancia, usar máscara y evitar uh, reuniones familiares. Ahí vemos en muchas ocasiones donde este virus se transmite a personas. Um, sabemos que en muchas ocasiones, particularmente las personas vacunadas, los síntomas son relativamente leves. Pero sabemos también que en aquellas personas eh, que están mayores, que tienen condiciones crónicas, uh, se pueden enfermar más. Uh, el hecho de que nosotros nos dé algo leve no quiere decir que a la persona que se lo, transmitivo, que se lo transmitimos, eh, los síntomas van a ser leves. So what we're saying is uh, prevention is key. Avoid family gatherings. Most of the illnesses are mild illness, but should you transmit it to others, they may have more serious illness, particularly the unvaccinated. The vaccinated people When they get Omicron, the illness tends to be mild, mostly upper airway disease, uh, sore throat, headache, uh, nasal congestion. Um, but prevention is a key. By the time you're seeking a test, it's too late. You know, we want to be on the preventive side. And if you take these precautions, don't go out unless you have to. Buy groceries, work, uh, or, see, or see a doctor. Those are the the key feature, but if you, if you could stay home, that would be great. And this is the disease of everyone. Whatever one person does will probably affect many others. So I think Dr. Williams emphasized that really well. Uh, and, and then testing is important, but it's not the solution to this. The solution is, is prevention. So, so there are two kinds of tests, the PCR and the antigen test. I don't know about the COVID la PSR y la del antígeno. I'm let Dr. Williams explain the difference and maybe why we use PCR sometimes and the antigen, although the reality is that we use whatever test is available. At the moment for community, we're doing the PCR, but the antigen test. I'm going to let Dr. Williams explain what that what the difference is. No, thank you so much. And you know, I know that there is a lot of confusion and honestly, it can be a little bit confusing. So I think this is a perfect topic. So just like you mentioned, there's two types of tests. There's a PCR, there's an antigen. So the PCR uses technology called nucleic acid amplification. So basically what that does is that it, it's able to literally amplify uh, small amounts of the virus. So it, it allows for us to detect small amounts of virus or virus at a lower level than the antigen test. So what does that mean? It basically means that we can detect uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection earlier in the course of illness than an antigen test. So why is that important? It's important to, to detect early, obviously, so you can isolate, you can inform your, your close contacts, your family members, um, you can you know, inform your job, and also, of course, you can inform your doctor in case you have any, uh, any, other, any other issues. Um, that is 
differs from the antigen test. So what the antigen test does is that it um, has a lower sensitivity. So it basically takes a higher amount of virus in order for the antigen test to become positive. So why is that important? That's basically important is if you've had COVID infection for a few days, you can do an antigen test to see essentially if you're still infectious and to see if you can end isolation. As you know, the CDC recently came out with a recommendation that is an option. Um, around day five, you can do an antigen test. And if that test is still positive, then you would still isolate for a full 10 days, as opposed to any isolation at five days if you don't have, have any symptoms. So, um, you know, again, uh, it's mainly used for if you are infectious, because you know, there's two things. There's infected, meaning that you have the virus, and then there's infectious, meaning that you have virus at a high enough level that you're able to shed the virus on, on to, to other people. So the home testing is an antigen test. Um, so that's, that's done, you know, less sensitivity. It, it does require, and in the proper clinical context, a positive test is pretty indicative. In some cases, we want to confirm that not always. I think here we feel pretty comfortable that if the clinical syndrome is consistent with the illness and there is a test, isolation is, is required. And usually the PCR is usually not done after seven to 10 days uh, of illness, then the antigen test is usually recommended. So in Mariposa tenemos el PSR. Uh, por ahora estamos buscando el antígeno para tenerlo disponible. Um, pero el PSR es, los que es la prueba que tenemos disponible que la enviamos a fin. Desafortunadamente, por la demanda de las pruebas, está tomando un poquito más de tiempo. Uh, a veces toma 24 horas, a veces 48, a veces 3 días, varía. No tenemos control de eso, uh, pero sugerimos si hay síntomas, la persona se debe aislar por 5 días. Porque la prueba puede tomar 2 o 3 días y si uno no se ha aislado en ese transcurso de tiempo, puede haber infectado a otras personas. So what we're saying is that if you have symptoms consistent with COVID, and the test result is going to take two days. Isolate yourself. You don't spread the virus to others. And then if the test is positive, then complete the isolation for five days. And usually, usually, no test is required to come up isolation. If you have persistent symptoms, I think, uh, then we should consult the doctor and maybe consider other kinds of testing. Right, Dr. Williams? Exactly. exactly. Okay. Muy bien, muy bien. So, so the third piece we wanted to cover, the two medications. This is evolving. Uh, the FDA, as you know, approved two medications um, to manage COVID. Um, one of them is called Paxlovid, and the other one's called Molnupiravir. Uh, they're, they're slightly different. Uh, Molnupiravir is uh, uh, approved to be used in... in Adults, Paxlovid is, can be used in 12 and over. Um, um, the doses are different. The important thing is that they are to be used uh, within five days of the onset of symptoms. And, and that's a problem in some cases because sometimes when we see the patient or the results are back, uh, it's past the five days, so we do everything we can to make a diagnosis. Um, uh, Molnupiravir has a better side effect profile. Paxlovid has more side effects, and Paxlovid um, uh, has more drug interactions. So it's important to consult with the doctor about certain drugs that you may be taking that may be affected by Pax Paxlovid. In clinical studies, Paxlovid is more effective. The reduction in, in hospitalization and death is, is about 89%. Molnupiravir, Molnupiravir is about 39%, so it's a, it's a better drug, but at a higher price. You know, there are more issues. In Santa Cruz County, as of yesterday, the only drug we had available was Molnupiravir. And we follow the guidelines um, established for the use of this drug. Um, 
the Arizona Department of Health Services rec uh, has created a tier system. So tier one is those patients 70 and older, and those who are immunocompromised. That's tier one. And then tier two is those 50 and over with comorbidity. So, and, and they created that because, because there's a, a scarcity of drugs. We want to use it effectively. We have treated a couple of patients with these drugs and they've done um, really, really well. So we want to review that with you. Hay dos medicinas, una que se llama Paxlovid y la otra se llama Molnupiravir. Um, Molnupiravir tiene menos efectos secundarios. Está aprobado para uh, personas de 18 años hacia arriba. Paxlovid 12. Paxlovid tiene más efectos secundarios y más interacciones con otras medicinas. Paxlovid es un poquito más efectiva que el Molnupiravir. Seguimos el criterio creado por el Departamento de Salud de Arizona de acuerdo a la edad y de acuerdo a las condiciones. Um, evaluamos cada paciente. La mayoría de los pacientes no necesitan medicamentos, se recobran, pero siempre nos preocupa aquellos pacientes que están mayores o tienen un sistema inmune bajo. So that's, those, are, those are the two drugs that, that we were using. We hope that we have Paxlovid available within a few days. The allocation for our state was very low. Actually, every state just got a, a, a small number, but we'll see if we can get some, some next week. Anything else, Dr. Williams? You know, just a reminder that, um, you know, our vaccination campaign will really yeah. never, never end. You know, if you go to our Mariposa website or the, the county website, there's uh, several locations where you can receive vaccines. Okay. Our vaccination campaign at the REC is winding down. We have one more date on uh, February 9th for kids yeah. ages 5 to 11. Right. But we're still vaccinating in our clinic on Tuesdays, kids, and also people, uh, uh, people over 12 on Thursdays. And of course, there's several sites with the county as well. Right. Thank you for the reminder. And we, we also want to remind people that the key to this prevention, uh, avoid family gatherings, um, avoid travel, stay home. Um, and the key is try to prevent uh, infection spread to others. So uh, testing is important, but not as important as prevention. I want to thank Dr. Williams for joining me today, Egardo and Marco and everyone in Mariposa. Thanks to our followers. I hope this is useful. We'll give, give you an update soon. See you the next time. Thank you very much. al mundo.